Uh, he said, uh, it's not that spicy. No, there definitely aren't. <laughs> All you need is passion for food and creepy uncle standing next to you. This is how you make perfect egg fried rice. Chef Brian Sao here, not your typical chef. And today I'm gonna be reacting to Uncle Roger amazed by perfect egg fried rice, Chef Wang Gang. Shout out to my viewers, Shirley and WS Lim. Thank you so much for suggesting this video. You guys were definitely the first ones to do it. And then followed by many, 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 many others in the comment sections for all the other Uncle Roger videos. <laughs> If you're new to the channel, I am a professional chef with 17 years of experience. I've defeated Bobby Flay on the Food Network show, Beat Bobby Flay, as well as run the world-renowned kitchen of Beauty in Essex, located right here in New York City. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back, but also please consider becoming a patron. Link in the description below. Patrons now get to view the episodes a whole week early before they come out on its regular scheduled time. And lastly, if you can follow Mission Sandwich on Instagram, Instagram, which is the official account for my upcoming sandwich shop due to open this spring in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. The views and opinions expressed in this show are exactly that. They're just my views and opinions based on my years of experience being a culinary professional, but I don't always get it right. So let me know in the comments below if I said something incorrectly. If you have something to add, I would love to know because I love to learn. And with that said, let's see what Chef Wang Gang is all about. Chef Wang, aka Wang Gang. Oh, Wang Gang. Okay. All right. So sorry for mispronouncing it. Wang Gang. <laughs> it's Wang Gang. Uh, obviously, he's from China. That's the Chinese pronunciation of how to say that. Uh, my bad. So he's using day old rice. Great start. Awesome. Um, also, who the fuck is that dude standing next to him? He's like, uh, uh, like either his mentor or his uncle or somebody that's just judging him hard, like looking at the rice saying, is that really day old rice? Are you sure? You know, because it's never enough, especially when you're an Asian kid looking upon your elders. It's never enough. What you do is never enough. Leftover cold. <laughs> the uncle's like, is he trying to smile? He's struggling. <laughs> Rice for fire rice. Could start Uncle yep. Roger like Good this stuff. video already. Chef Wang cooking for his uncle. <laughs> you don't even need to tell me this is uncle because clearly everything... this is like the the prototypical uh, Southern Chinese uncle for sure, hundred percent. I wish we could see his feet to see if he's wearing flip flops. That would complete the look, hundred percent. This guy scream Chinese uncle. Uncle Roger like his fashion. Oh, good. Chili. Chili, good. Right. Dan chao fan means uh, literally means egg fried rice uh, in in uh, English. Uh, you get what I mean. Oh, okay. Did you? Uh, let's see if we can catch this again. You see that he cracked the egg on a flat surface. That's actually the most efficient way and easiest way to crack an egg, because generally a flat surface like a table, like a butcher block, will resist the impact versus the edge of a bowl. It's very common for people to generally hit the edge of the bowl because there's a peak and that can break into the shell. But by doing it on a flat surface, number one, that flat surface is generally much more sturdy. So uh, the egg is cracking onto a flat surface. One key difference between a flat surface and the edge of a bowl is that you have less chance of eggshells going into your egg when you do it on a flat surface. And also you don't need as much force cracking onto an, uh, a flat surface because that flat surface will not break under the pressure or flex or fluctuate when you hit it as the as opposed to the side of a bowl, especially if it's empty, the bowl could actually shift and you actually need more strength to crack it open, increasing the chances of you breaking it all over the place and shoving egg shards into the egg and into your final product. Fuyo. <laughs> he gets a Fuyo. <laughs> His egg cracking technique so smooth. Tap, crack and throw all in one fluid motion. <laughs> Chef Wang have more talent in one hand than Jamie Oliver <laughs> have in his whole body. Shots fired. Uncle just standing there. Yes. <laughs> so unimpressed. <laughs> Very typical. Uh, Asian elder um, move. Just never be impressed. Never be impressed and hopefully your child will do better. 
because you never showed them love. Chilies? Mm. Uh, I mentioned in a uh, previous video of knife holding technique. I should mention I'm a Western trained chef. Uh, I was I'm not an Eastern trained chef, so I learned you know classical French and Italian food. I went to culinary school for it. You do take a course in Asian cookery, but you know it's like a one week course. All the stuff I learned about Asian cookery is from uh, growing up, being exposed to it as a young child, and also for a short time owning a Chinese takeout restaurant, like I mentioned. Uh, in past videos involuntarily. Again, that's a whole nother story. Generally, Western knife holding technique is like this with the fingers wrapped, your finger and thumb wrapped onto the blade to really give you a lot of control. I mentioned that a telltale sign of someone's experience level uh, when they hold their knife like this generally to me is a sign that they're not very experienced or they're a home cook. You can see that Chef Wang Gong is holding the blade kind of like this. And uh, I think that's okay in this case because it's a much bigger blade. And if anything, it probably gives him more control over the blade because he's increasing the surface area of his hand onto the knife, giving him a better grip. You couldn't do that with this knife because if you cut down, I would cut the tip of my finger off. Also notice um, Chef Wang Gong's posture, keeping very straight all the time. I am guilty of eventually slouching as my day goes on as I work, but very good posture, good for his back. Oh, uh, he said, uh, it's not that spicy. No, there definitely aren't. <laughs> so, so typical old school Chinese uncle, just like saying a backhanded comment, you know, not really adding to the conversation, but just, you know, saying a comment that puffs them up, you know, makes them feel better. Like, that's right. You know, that's right. It's not that spicy. I can handle that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I love how he looks away. He's like, look, he's like, yeah, I know. That's, like, That's not that spicy. <laughs> like, ah, that another Asian uncle. Be <laughs> Asian uncle like me. We all so competitive about spice eating. Always try to be better at eating spice than <laughs> other people. That's why he said this. Oh my God. Oh, Uncle Roger, I see you. I see you. Not spicy. <laughs> Nothing ever too spicy for Uncle Roger, except Nigella Lawson. <laughs> right? Some red bell pepper. <laughs> Chopping good again. No, oh, okay. Good point here, and I'm definitely guilt, you know, guilty of this. But when I cook for family, when I'm cooking at home or a more casual setting, I definitely get a little lazier, quote unquote. You know, I will leave in seeds. I won't be as precise with things. And he mentioned right here in a restaurant setting that they would take out the seeds. Very, very good point. I would do the exact same thing. I would definitely refine it a little more because while I feel like when you're cooking for your home in a more casual setting, having seeds in there, no one's really gonna mind, especially in a bell pepper, they're relatively tender. If you do put them into a uh, dish in a uh, restaurant setting, I think it will kind of take you out of the moment a little, unless it's like a super duper mom and pop shop. You, kind of would expect it all to be in there. You don't want to waste anything, as Chef Wang Gang mentioned a few sentences earlier. But yeah, good point. Very good point. I like this Chef Wang guy. He's saying to his uncle, in hotel, if I make this, I make this dish pretty. But now I cooking at home, I don't give shit. <laughs> you should be grateful for whatever I make you. This Chef Wang so sassy. And Uncle Roger mm. just noticed why his uncle looks like Dylan <laughs> from Kung Fu Hustle. Oh my god. <laughs> the resemblance is striking. Hang on. I gotta look at that. <laughs> oh my. It's, they could be brothers. Holy crap. <laughs> From Kung Fu Hustle. Kung Fu Hustle, by the way, is the shit. I love that movie so much. <laughs> All right. Some spring onion. Beautiful. <laughs> Oh, this chef one. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, very Asian to show your affection through some kind of materialistic means. You know, I won't say to my uncle outright, I love you, you know, man, you're the shit. You're great, you know. In their mind, I love you, uncle. I look up to you. And then they'll be like, you like spring onions. I will give you extra spring onions. <laughs> or, you know, in my dad's case, like, I, I, won't, I won't hug and kiss you and play catch with you, but I will buy you new rollerblades. <laughs> you know, whatever it is, it's uh, affection 
typically, as far as my observation goes, in most Asian cultures is shown through some kind of materialistic means. Ooh, uh, you saw that walk technique? And he's using the big walk. You know, this, this is the type of walk where it has the two handles on the side, not the single handle. I'm assuming he's got, well, he did crack like four or five eggs, right? Something like that. So he's gonna make a big portion of fried rice. Thus, he's gonna need a bigger pan and that's to increase the surface air, the, the cooking surface area. So more of your product gets exposed because if you have too small of a pan and too much product in it, that's called um, overcrowding. And what's gonna happen is because everything's crowded together, the moisture in the center can't escape. So essentially what you're doing is steaming rather than sauteing or frying or whatever it is, because it's all compact together. By increasing the surface area and spreading your product out, the moisture can escape. And what did we mention in the previous um, egg fried rice videos, I've done many of them at this point, re reacting to Uncle Roger, is that, uh, well, Jamie's rice was very moist and he was using a saute pan. Uh, I think he was making like two portions worth of rice, whatever. But to me, well, that came out as a wet product. Gordon Ramsay, you saw his rice had so much separation because he used a bigger wok to increase the surface area so the stuff doesn't sit in there and steam. And that's exactly what Chef Wang Gong is doing, is using a bigger wok so that his cooking area to food product ratio is in line to give him the best product possible is, is the best way I can explain it. Uncle Roger excited because they are gonna cook in outdoor kitchen. <laughs> okay, uh, well, they're, they are in an outdoor kitchen. Obviously, I'm not gonna disagree with that, but let's talk about this kitchen setup a little bit. Um, pro, obviously, pro kitchen setup. You see that water spout that's on there? Walk stations general, oh, will always have a water spout. It's for two things. One is to have a steady stream of water going into a pot. They have one container where the water sp pours into because the way these spouts work is it's on this hinge and when you push it to the side, the water turns off. If you push it to the center, the water comes out. So generally they'll have a pot of water to catch any water runoff when it's turned off. In this case, they have it just consistently pouring in, um, which I I'm assuming is uh, so that they have access to water, but also that water cools down the walk station because again, these burners are so powerful. If they don't have something consistently cooling it down, you'll start to see carbon form on top. So I'm guessing that's what this is. It's spilling over, getting onto the walk station. The walk stations that I've worked on, uh, you know, the little time that I've worked on walk stations, they have this pipe of this thin pipe that has holes in it. And it's just slowly pouring out a stream of water. And that's what's cooling the walk station. This faucet also goes over a big giant pot of chicken stock, ji tang, which is like the foundation of their cooking station, whether they're making sauces or soups or need to hydrate something a little bit, it comes from that chicken stock that's working all the time. Mm. And Chef Wang, he got two walk. He a walk fuck boy, just like <laughs> Uncle Gordon. What an honor. Oh. Okay, so he's seasoning the wok and then he'll probably pour that out and put in fresh oil. That is because when you heat up the wok, the pores of the metal open up. It'll take in that oil, you pour it out, and then you put in some fresh oil. Uh, that oil will generally be colder. So now your pan has that coating of oil that's actually in the cells of the metal. And then you have the fresh oil that, you know, pulls up a little that's actually gonna... Th so that first layer will facilitate non-sticking. That second layer will better facilitate the cooking process. Okay, he's seasoning the wok, coating it with oil. Yep, dumping it out. Now fresh oil go fresh in. Oil. Okay, Good. all it eggs in. in. All right, you, so you saw he didn't whisk them up. You can, you can. I've seen it done both ways, clearly. Before I start this video again, remember in Gordon's video, I mentioned that when he put in the egg, the wok wasn't hot enough. You know, you saw him literally whisk it for another 10, 20 seconds after the egg went into the wok and it wasn't bubbling up, it wasn't cooking because again, the wok wasn't hot enough. In this case, clearly the wok is hot enough. And when I press play again, you're gonna see how much this egg bubbles up. Good. See? Yep, there you go. This Completely only... non-stick. Oh shit, the uncle is smiling too. He's <laughs> finally impressed. <laughs> and look, look at Chef Wang Gong looking over like, yeah. I've succeeded today. I've I've received the approval of my elder today. <laughs> Time I 
sexy chef while Uncle smiling. Apparently, seeing people fry egg brings him so much joy. <laughs> nice, nice. Totally non stick and flip. Sweet. So, uh, I've typically seen egg fried rice. Uh, when you put in the egg, you break it up right away. Um, clearly, Chef Wang Gong let it stir around, and you know, you can see how well done the egg is cooked on that one side. I think in this scenario, it's okay because let's remember he's using the bigger wok, so it means that he's probably going to make a bigger portion of fried rice, which is going to require a lot more rice. And I think what's going to happen is he's going to put in this big portion of rice, it's heavy. He's He's gonna have to work it more and in that process of working it more um, it's gonna the eggs just naturally gonna fall apart Yo, the egg slips so smooth so smooth let watch again <laughs> let watch again now notice chef wang gong's technique the wok never leaves the burner. Telltale sign of someone who's super experienced at wok cookery. It's almost like it's almost like a drummer, and when they do a really fast drum roll, they're not actually individually striking each note. They're letting the stick bounce and using their fingers to pivot the the um, the sticks so you get the most efficient transfer of energy to get this crazy drum roll. Same exact principle for this walk where he's using the edge of the walk and just kind of a jerk motion, a minimal jerk motion from his arm to cause the product to bounce. This guy make his egg look like it dancing. <laughs> Green and red chili. Going go in, in with the veggie. Ah, you see, he didn't put in his spring onions, his scallions yet, because that shit will get wilted. He's putting in just the chilies. Good. Nice. Ah, he's breaking up the egg now. Great. And you saw that walk technique never lets it leave the edge of the burner. You're not going to be able to do this at a, on a conventional Western stove, but also you're probably not making the quantity as either. So if you're only making, you know, one or two dishes in your walk at home, don't worry about if you have the right bounce technique with your pan on the edge of the burner because the burners in Western stove on Western stoves are not designed this way anyway. So. Yeah, no sweat. You see that big portion of rice that he's just gonna dump right on top of that egg? He's gonna be able to break that up in no time with that mass and him having to work it in with the spoon and all that. So let's keep watching. And now the rice go in. Right, yep, exactly. Ooh, Beautiful, tossing. wonderful to, ah! And he's using the back end of the wok spoon to break up the clumps of rice because the back end has a lot more surface area. So if there's all these clumps, it'll break it down as opposed to going like this or using a spatula or something to go in that way you're actually just going to cut the rice kernels by this way it's a it's much more gentle but a bigger surface area to break up that rice and this to prevent clumping of the mm -hmm. rice mm -hmm. mm, good great technique. and he at the same time he's also breaking up the egg good technique and you know what this te the technique of letting the egg cook really well is kind of cool and also i didn't think of it in that it's going to be crispier so it's going to break up easier too nice step and i think you won't really feel like the egg is overcooked because there's so much moisture in the rice as you cook it it'll hydrate it a little bit Fuyo. uncle mm. roger can watch his tossing every day this guy know what he doing. Yeah. I wonder if Chef Wang is single because he seems so confident. Mm -hmm. Very confident, laser focused. <laughs> is, is the uncle looking at the camera or just continuing to judge his nephew? Whatever the scenario is, you know, his posture is good. He is slouching a tiny bit, but that's normal. You know, maybe he was just standing super straight for the camera in the beginning and then habit kind of falls in. That's not really important. You see clearly how confident he is. He's clearly done this a gajillion times and this really is on its way to be the perfect egg fried rice. His right hand. Sorry, children. <laughs> Every time he uses that porn hub music, <laughs> freaking gets me every time. Beautiful, great rice grain separation. Great walk technique. I like how his uncle just standing there gawking at the fire rice. That's exactly how Uncle Roger flirt with woman. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Ooh. <gasps> Is that <laughs> Uncle Roger's favorite thing in the world. I'm pretty sure that's not salt. I'm pretty sure that's um, MSG. You know, the, the seasoning of the gods. Is that what I think it is? I think so, Uncle Roger. Mm-hmm. 
Is that MSG Theo? I think now it's time to use Jamie Oliver's favorite word. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> and soy sauce. And soy sauce, great. MSG is going to add, you know, just increase the depth of the umami and the uh, savory qualities of this rice. And then same thing with the soy sauce. Soy sauce can actually contain some natural MSG within it. Okay. Great. Ah, did you notice that flipping technique? It's not actually about the flipping, but the fact that he put it onto the edge of the wok, let the soy sauce hit the wok and almost like, you know, this is again, this is another part of wok hay. The soy sauce is gonna hit that wok and it's gonna be on that verge of burning, give you that, it's like on the verge of getting smoky. Now, if you burn something, that's not a good smoke. When I think of smoky, a good, smoky food quality i'm thinking like barbecue like texas style barbecue that's a real wonderful desirable type of smoky flavor as opposed to singeing something like Kay's rice where she just completely singed the garlic that is not you know a, a good that's not a good smoky flavor by any means but he's putting it onto the edge of the wok it's gonna just about to reach that burn point but then he's gonna quickly flip in the rice and incorporate that flavor and again because he's constantly keeping it in motion it, it never gets to the point where it's actually full-on burnt it's like teetering on that edge Yo, and again unique to the wok splash form a circle yeah you see how fast that thing was starting to evaporate and now the spring onions everything correct oh is that <laughs> uncle roger's sea chicken in the background i like his uncle house got chicken on floor you can use for cooking and got bamboo stick back there used for beating nephew everything you need is on the ground mm. Mm -hmm. Ooh, looks so nice. Nice. Ooh, you see? Pff, straight up pro. Straight up pro. Again, being so efficient with his energy, using the bounce and holding his spoon. That's an OG. That And that's also something I can't do. I can try, but I won't make it look that good. Nick. Mm hmm Usually, yeah. normal chef will just scoop rice up from wok, but this chef one, he walked toss the rice into ladle. That's actually not unusual to see it from a pro. Uh, pretty much every wok cook I've ever seen work the wok station plated up their rice like that. Not just their rice, almost all the dishes. Um, again, just more efficient. Fuyo, this is so graceful. He like dancer, like dancer. All this tossing and he don't drop single grain of rice. That's not true. No matter what, no matter how good the chef is, that fucking rice gets everywhere. I remember the cleanup after the end of the day, there was always rice somewhere. It just inevitable. <laughs> I hope they do taste tests. Nice to me. Oh, oh the uncle is, he's like, yeah, he can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> ah, let's point out something on the stove. You see that handle? Very cool. The way that handle works actually is that's the that's to turn the burner on. So the burner is a gas burner typically for this type of setup is always a gas burner. And there's a little pilot light, which means a tiny little fire where gas comes out. You have to light that if the pilot goes out, you could potentially start a fire if it fills the room without good ventilation with gas. Pilot light is on and the burner, that lever, by that blue strip you see over there, that is the uh, for to turn on the open the gas for the rest of the burner, and that's actually controlled by your knee. Here, let me see if I can demonstrate for you. You use your knee to kind of move it, not this high, obviously. It's just it's literally you just raise your knee a tiny bit. Hope you guys heard that. You use your knee to actually lift it up to turn it on, and you use your knee to push it down. Uh, so um, I think many of you may have not have known that. A little fun fact. Oh, auntie's in the picture now. Oh, it's all smiles. <laughs> oh, he's smiling. He's smiling. I, I couldn't hear what he said. That how you know his egg fire rice amazing. But I agree with that. Uncle's happy. That's good enough. His grumpy. Uh, I mean, the uncle's smiling. <laughs> That's good enough. Mm -hmm. That's that's what makes uh, the walk. You know what uh, Chef Wang Gang was saying. Without the walk, hey, it's just it's not right. And that is what makes walk cookery so special. Words of wisdom. 
What a twist. Yep, don't cook with hot rice because it's going to have so much moisture spewing from it. Again, day-old rice, you're going to get the best product. All you need is passion for food and creepy uncle standing next to you. This is how you make perfect egg fried rice. 10 out of 10, absolutely perfect. Chef Wang Gang, real deal. Clearly, <laughs> Uncle Roger and I agreed on a few things. And uh, one thing I wanna add before I close this video, cause I mentioned in the uh, feed of my channel that if I hit 10K subs, I would uh, do an egg fried rice video of my own. I was, I was planning to put that into a video, but you guys helped me reach 10K way sooner than I expected. Thank you so much. With that said, I'm still gonna do that video, but I wanna give you a little sneak peek because remember I mentioned the ratio of cooking surface to food product? I'm gonna, I don't have a wok burner at my home kitchen. Again, using my experience, try to figure out how do I get the closest thing to wok A with the limitations that I have. I am gonna use a wok. I am gonna make egg fried rice, but we're gonna employ some principles to try to get the best possible product for making egg fried rice in a conventional in a conventional Western home kitchen. With that said, looking forward to making that one. That's coming in a few weeks. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. I cannot believe that I hit 10K subs. I am completely blown away. Thank you. With that said, I am Chef Brian Sow, not your typical chef, and I'll see you really soon.